Right, number 23. Uh, figure 23.1 shows a metal cylinder of diameter about five centimeters placed on a horizontal table. Describe how you can use instruments available in the physics laboratory to determine the pressure exerted by the cylinder on the table. State how you would make your results as precise as possible. Okay, the thing you've got to realize with this is they're telling you that it's only about five centimeters, just to give you a, a sense of scale so you can work out what instruments you would need in order to measure the diameter. So as with uh, with with these ones where you're having to describe an experiment I would always put three columns and I would say analysis over on the right I would say measurements and I would say the equipment Okay, so what we're looking to do is if we start with the analysis and then we'll work our way backwards. So I need to work out um, what the pressure is on there. So I need a formula that's to do with pressure. And I know that pressure is equal to the force over the cross-sectional area. And now I ask myself the question, can I directly measure the force? Yes, I can which would mean I would, uh, because the force will be the weight, so I would say measure measurements would be the weight. And what equipment I would use to do, use that is I would use a Newton meter. And now I have to ask myself the question, can I directly measure the area? The answer to that is no, so I need a little bit more analysis, and we know it's a cylinder, so I would say that the cross-sectional area is equal to pi r squared. And now I ask myself the question, can I directly measure the radius? The answer is no. So I need to work, calculate the radius. So I would say that the radius is equal to half of the diameter. Can I measure the diameter? Yes, I can. So I would say measure the diameter. And because we know it's around about five centimeters from up here, I would say, and also the question is asking to make our results as precise as possible. Well, I could use a ruler, but they're not very precise, but I could use a micrometer or a vernier scale or vernier calipers. I think a micrometer would be perfectly fine. Okay, and that's how we do it. And I should imagine that, even though I haven't written any sentences, that's going to get me all four marks. So let's move on to the next part. We have to state Archimedes' principle. Um, in the old spec, these kind of questions used to come up quite a lot. They're not so common now, but you still need to know them because they definitely will be um, testing your application of these. So Archimedes' principle states that the upthrust... is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Okay, and I'm pretty sure the next part of the question is going to make sure we understand what that actually means. So, We've got uh, figure 23.2 shows the metal cylinder from A hung from a Newton meter. The reading on the Newton meter is nine Newtons. So that tells me I've got a weight of nine Newtons. The cylinder is slowly lowered into the water in a beaker until it is completely submerged. The cylinder does not touch the side or the bottom of the beaker, the Newton meter is now reading 7.8 Newtons. The density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. Calculate the density rho of the metal of the cylinder. Okay, so what we know is the 
up thrust. So if we, let's just draw a force diagram here. So here's my cylinder. I know I've got a weight of nine newtons pulling it down. And then if the newton meter now is only reading 7.8 newtons, obviously it's still in equilibrium. So that means I must have a second upward force, which is the up thrust. And that up thrust is going to equal nine take away my 7.8 which is 1.2 newtons and now from Archimedes principle we know that the up thrust is equal to the uh, weight of the fluid displaced so I know that the density is mass over volume and I need to work out well what volume of water has displaced but the volume of the water that's displaced is going to equal the volume of the cylinder so um, my up thrust is 1.2 newtons so the weight of the fluid displaced is going to equal oh sorry is going to equal um, sorry the volume of the fluid displaced is going to equal the mass of the water divided by the density but of course the mass of the water is going to be the weight divided by g 9.81 so my volume is going to be 1.2 divided by 9.81 divided by the density which is a thousand and that will give me an answer of uh, 1.2232 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed and now I've got to work out the density of my cylinder. Well, I know the weight of my cylinder. So the weight of my cylinder, I need to get the mass. So if I take the weight, which is 9, and I divide that by 9.81. And then if I divide that by my volume, in fact, we, we can probably see the 9.81s in the calculations, they would have cancelled out, but I've... I've, I've gone with them so I'll carry on so multiplied uh, by the volume which I've got in my calculator is 1.2232 times 10 to so the minus 4 so 9 divided by that gives me an answer of put it in 7500 kilograms per meter cubed